In this tutorial I'm going to describe what the spline component does and I'm going to do it with regards to this uh, polymer film that I've got displayed in the scattering length density graph at the moment. This polymer film creates nice Kiesig fringes, uh, nice and uniform. It's uh, silicon uh, D2O, so it's a solid liquid measurement, silicon, silicon dioxide, polymer film, D2O. This polymer film um, seems to have a uniform scattering length density. That is, it can be described by a single slab layer. And what I've done is I've already fitted this data set uh, with a two layer model. So we've got the fronting, which is silicon, going to silicon dioxide, our polymer layer, then the backing medium. And I've copied that model into uh, from uh, from that data set into the theoretical model, so it's reproduced here. And we're going to compare against that original model. So the first thing in demonstrating this uh, this spline layer is to get rid of uh, the polymer layer, that slab. I'm going to add in a spline component. And in this spline component, I'm going to have three knots. We see the spline component come up here. And we now have a region uh, that seems to have loads more steps in it now. Um, the scattering length density profile isn't very smooth. Or, well, it is smooth, but it's approximated now by a whole series of steps. And that's the corresponding fit, uh, model reflectivity with uh, from that uh, from this SLD profile. So if we expand the spline layer, I'm going to increase the full extent of the spline for 230 angstroms. I'm going to expand these two these two nodes. Now what a spline is is it's a way of uh, describing a region of the scattering length density profile uh, by a polynomial with a, a set number of nodes and it, the spline draws a, a smooth curve through those three points. So it's a freeform uh, way of describing a region of the scattering length density profile. So if I... Um, uh, these uh, DZs here uh, describe uh, the spacing of the knots, the control knots, uh, within the spline. And I'm just going to set those up. Uh, they're DZs because it's a, uh, it's a distance. Uh, this point 1 refers to 10% uh, of the way through this uh, total spline extent. So the first spline would be at 23 angstroms, the next one would be halfway through because uh, 0.1 plus 0.4 is 0.5, so it would be um, 115 angstroms. And then these VSs uh, specify the scattering densities at each of the knot points. So if I, um, at the moment they're all set to minus 1. If I change this one to say 5, uh, you see that it uh, the spline, this free form. We now create a, a free form model that goes <laughs> something like a sine wave, I guess. Um, but by using different numbers of knots, say going from uh, one to two to three to four to five, you can build in increasing flexibility within this region and describe the region with a free form profile. So let's see what happens. And you, you know, I could change the, I could change the, all different kinds of stuff. Like you know, so we could create a linear profile uh, if we wanted to. Let's make that five. So that's not quite linear yet. You know, that's starting to approximate a linear profile or something along those lines. Um, so if you have a region which you 
which you're not quite sure is uniform um, or can be described by a, a single slab. Sometimes you might use two slabs, three slabs, four slabs to approximate that variation in scattering length density profile. But it's difficult to do that for a, you know, to create, say, a linear profile or something that's smoothly varying. And that's what this, uh, this spline region does. So we're going to use a spline now to fit this data set and figure out where, you know, just see if our layer really is uniform or not, or whether it be dis better described by um, this freeform model. So I'm going to start off by approximating um, the model that we've already, I've already created with the uniform density. So like now we're not 100%, uh, we're now not too, too far off. Um, the original model that we had uh, in, up here, so you know with our single slab describing this polymer layer. I'll just increase that to 240. Um, so we're not too dissimilar. Uh, and then I'm going to say that we want to fit all these spline coefficients. I'm going to give them sensible limits. don't have sensible limits things can go wrong um, now this as micro slab max thickness describes how um, how fine the steps are cut up into. So the maximum size of a slab in here is going to be two angstroms, but it could actually be slightly smaller. If I do it at five, you can see that now this that slab thickness is the maximum slab thickness is larger and so the the steps are, are more are grosser as it were. There's no point in setting it too fine, like two angstroms should be fine. And then this Z grad parameter says that the spline gradient at each end of the uh, at each end of the spline has to be zero. So zero gradient. If I say that it's false, it's hard to see. I'll just set that to 0.5. Let's see if I can demonstrate. Uh, if I if I have it off now, you see here that the gradient is not uh, kind of continuous with the pre with the silicon dioxide layer. If I turn it on now, it's uh, it's put a zero gradient at the end of the spline, which means that it segues nicely into the silicon dioxide layer. If I turn off the zero gradient, it's just a straight. Uh, it's a discontinuous uh, gradient. So sometimes you might want to have that on or off. Um, so we've set all our parameters up. Um, I'm just going to check that the limits are sane. Um, and then I might uh, just restrict the number of um, iterations that we do so it doesn't go on, uh, the fitting doesn't go on forever. Um, are we ready to go? Yeah, probably. Um, so we've uh, got the data, we've already dragged the data set into the list of data sets that are going to be fitted. Uh, the limits are all good, I think, because we've already uh, created the limits for the other parameters uh, when I did the fit with a single slab to start off with. And I think these uh, slab, uh, the spline coefficients have reasonable limits, oh, apart from that one. Let's say that the extent's going to be no less than 100 and no greater than 300. And click on go. 
So it's going off now and uh, going to do the fit. It might take a while. And the reason being is the more, um, this, because we're micro slicing this, uh, this spline region up uh, into lots of little slabs, each of which has a thickness no greater than 0.5 in an angstrom in this case, um, the calculation just takes a lot longer because instead of, say, one slab, you have, may have 400 slabs, so it's consequently a lot slower. Um, we, I should have really changed that back to 2.5 uh, before because it would have gone a lot faster. Anyway, the fitting's going. I'll we'll just see where it ends up. Chi-squared is coming down nicely. And so when you when you do these uh, these fits, you can try with, you know, like here we've got three knots. With uh, one knot, you might be expected to uh, be able to describe a quadratic polynomial over the spline region. With two knots, you could have uh, a cubic um, and, and so on. So, but it's, it's going to be locally cubic, no, no more than locally. Uh, <laughs> what is it? It's, yeah, the point. Oh, anyway, you can introduce more and more complexity with, by adding more knots. Um, when I did this with a single slab, I think the chi-squared value was something like 250 or something along those lines. So the fit's not still improving, but it's, it's going relatively slowly. I might just stop it there uh, so that the video doesn't... Oh. Got a small improvement. I might just stop it there um, for the sake of the, the video, so it doesn't go on for so long, and see what we get get up with, come up with. Okay, so that's what we've come up with so far. It's very similar uh, to what we had with the slab model. But the slab model is that red one there. The fit's not a huge amount greater and if anything it's slightly worse. Um, so probably in this case it's not uh, it's not worth or it's not justified using a spline um, but it is a worthwhile exercise showing you how useful a spline is. I might just get rid of that spline component now and add in let's add in a spline with loads of uh, just one knot. So that, that, that will be the spline control point down there. You can see the effect of turning off the zero gradient at both ends. So 0.5 means that it's half the way, the nut is half the way through that 250 angstrom extent of the spline. And we're just using it to generate, you know, smoothly varying curves. That's one knot. Let's use lots of knots. So as I said, these dz's are the dist, uh, fractional distance from the previous knot. So point 0.1 for the first one is 25 angstroms through the film. Uh, point 0.1 would be actually point 0.2. Uh, this, this knot would be point 0.2 of the way through the film, this knot would be point 0.3 of the way through the film, and so on. So you can create you know, all manner of weird and wonderful profiles 
using these splines. Um, use the number of knots sparingly, probably the minimum number of knots required to fit the data adequately, and you should, you should go well. Um, so if you have any questions about this, uh, this tutorial uh, or how to use a spine, please don't hesitate to uh, drop me a line and ask me any further questions. Cheers.